What's up everyone? Today I am reviewing Knit Cutters, The Troop. Now I'm just going to say right off the bat, this is a very well crafted story. I think this is a very good book, but I did not enjoy it all that much. <laughs> so let me explain. So this book is basically about this group of Boy Scouts. Um, I believe they're th between 13 and 14 years of age. There's five of them. And they visit this island. And they just go there to do some Boy Scout related things. Go hiking and earn some merit badges and things like that. And what happens when they're on this island is they encounter this parasitic infection. This creature that's basically invade your body and takes over and it turns into a fight for survival as they have no way of contacting the mainland no way of getting off this island and from there things turn very grim very gruesome and very dark so yeah let me explain <laughs> my thoughts and feelings on this one um this book was very compelling i finished this in the matter of like two and a half days roughly, and it's pretty rare for me to read a book that quickly. I could not put this one down. I had to know what was ha going to happen next. Uh, within the first few pages, I was pulled in, or not the first few pages, the first few chapters. The characters in here are all very believably drawn. They are a little bit stereotypical. Each character kind of fits a different stereotype that's typical in uh, horror movies and books, but they all have their own unique personalities and they all fair, felt very believable despite the more stereotypical side of them. And yeah, I was just very drawn into this and very, I felt like I just had to keep reading it and I was enjoying it very much early on. And the pacing of this book is very quick. Um, Things happen very fast. There's really not any dull moments, at least early on in the book. And I just felt the need to keep reading it to see what was going to happen next. So that was a strong point of this book, at least early on. Like I said, there were some dull moments a little bit later in the book, which I'll get to. And it is very gruesome. I will say that <laughs> if you're not into reading more extreme horror I would not recommend this one but the reason I didn't really enjoy it all that much is because this one was a little bit more serious than I was expecting uh, right away based on the synopsis and what I've read about this book and based on the first few chapters I was thinking this was just going to be fun schlocky just campy horror that's just entertaining and kind of cheesy at the same time but that is not what this is. So this book immediately you get pulled in by these characters and you kind of care about them and you just kind of have this emotional attachment to the story. At least I did. I think he, Nick Cutter did a very good job at drawing these characters, like I said. And things when things start to take a turn for the worse and they encounter this parasitic threat that the author uses to its full potential... Um, first of all, <laughs> the idea of a parasite as being the main villain or the main threat is absolutely terrifying. I'm a little bit of a germaphobe, so this book really did get under my skin. I'm going to admit that. <laughs> I was thinking about this book even when I wasn't reading it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I lost my appetite a few times when I was reading this book. I just had no desire to eat afterwards, even if it was I was getting a little bit hungry or it was around my dinner time or whatever. Yeah, this book really did get under my skin. I thought the horror was very effective, very well done. But the main thing about this book is not the horror of the villain itself, this parasite or whatever. But the fact of just how dark and sad this book is. I really got a sense of helplessness and just despair while reading this. And I was not expecting it to affect me just so emotionally. But it did. It really got to me because I just really cared about these characters. And I don't know. Nick Cutter just did a really good job at pulling me into the story. And then just being relentless with this just sense of hopelessness. 
it's just a very dark and sad novel. There's really not a lot of good that happens or that comes from this book. It's just brutal, relentless horror, just bad things happening to these characters. And instead of it being fun and typical of like a cheesy uh, horror novel, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's just tr kind of tragic. And that's why I didn't really enjoy it. This kind of happened more so towards the middle and the later portion of the book. I just had a hard time getting through it, to be honest. But I, at the same time, I couldn't put it down. I had to finish it. I had to know what was going to happen next. There were a couple of parts towards the end that I predicted. And I was correct in my predictions. But, yeah, I don't know. This one just doesn't have a lot of re-readability value for me. I can't see myself returning to this one in the future. I'm kind of remaining a little bit vague. I don't want to give away any spoilers or anything. I don't want to talk about the plot too much. But just know that this one is a lot darker and more serious than you might think it is. <laughs> yeah, the ending wasn't bad. It didn't necessarily have this terrible ending that I hated or anything. It just, again, it's just kind of a sad story. But I have to give credit where credit is due. The author succeeds in pulling this like emotional response out of me. This, these more negative emotions and just kind of making me feel what the characters are feeling in the story. So it's all done very well. It's just the simple fact that I had a hard time enjoying the story because of how grim it is and gritty. That... Yeah, I just had a hard time getting through it. I'm kind of repeating myself, so... <laughs> um, there were some other issues I had with it, um, just on the writing and the story itself. But they're mostly smaller things, nothing huge. I didn't really like the way Nick Carter described certain things. Um, there were just, I don't know, kind of a weird way he had of describing like the weather and the moon and everything. Like, we get it. The moon looks like a giant fingernail on the sky or the ocean is colored like, I don't know. He just had a whole weird way of describing certain things that didn't really work for me. And then in other areas, I feel like he didn't use enough description. I feel like he didn't describe the island enough and the um, just the way it looked and the wildlife and the nature of it. We didn't really get a whole lot of description of that. Instead, he just throws us lots of weird descriptions of like, the weather and the moon and the sun and what the ocean looked like and things like that. And it was just a little bit overly descriptive in some areas and he used a lot of similes and things like that. And it was just a little bit too much. And then in other areas, I felt like we could have used more description, like I said, about the island and stuff. And also, I mentioned this book was very fast paced and it is for the most part. But towards the middle of the book and maybe around like the three quarter of the way mark, it did get a little bit dull in areas. Uh, not necessarily like the book lost its suspense or anything like that or lost its tension. But I just felt like the characters didn't really have much direction or purpose. They were just kind of wandering around this island just waiting for the next bad thing to happen to them. Um, which one of them is going to get infected. That kind of thing. And it just felt like it was meandering a little bit almost. And... Yeah, I don't know. I just, I think Nick Cutter could have explored the idea of the survival aspect a little bit more. I would have liked to see some more action from these characters, these Boy Scouts. I would have liked them um, try to, I don't know, just become more involved in this survival aspect. And we didn't really get a whole lot of that. It was just them kind of wandering around, just um, talking about their situation and what they should do and not really doing a whole lot <laughs> so yeah i don't know i just felt like it lacked a little bit of direction at times um i'm <laughs> kind of tired right now i'm gonna be honest i'm trying to remember everything i wanted to say about this book but overall i think this was a good book like i said i finished it in roughly two and a half days i don't finish books very often that quickly Usually a 350 or 400 page novel, it's going to take me at least a week to get through it. 
sometimes a couple weeks if I'm busy or I'm not enjoying it a ton. But yeah, this one I finished very quickly, but I can't see myself reading it again. I just felt kind of empty, just kind of dead inside after finishing it because of how dark it was. And I was not expecting that. But like I said, he did succeed in making me um, a little bit squeamish, grossing me out a little bit with some of the stuff that happens in here. Again, this book is very, very horrific, very graphic. And he did get those emotions out of me. So props to the author for doing that. <laughs> At the end of the day, I think I'm going to give this one three and a half out of five stars. I just can't give it any more than that because I didn't love it or anything. And it was a hard book to get through at times. And some of the writing also, like I said, was a little bit rough. And I feel like this certain aspects of the story could have been done a little bit better. But overall, this was a pretty solid horror read. I just don't think I can recommend it to everybody. I don't think this would appeal to everyone. I think someone who's looking for more extreme horror would enjoy this. But again, it's also a little bit of a hard book to enjoy just because not a, there's not a lot of good in here. It's just kind of a dark, tragic story. So, yeah, I don't know. I know there's more I wanted to say. I know sometimes when I do reviews um, and I turn off the camera, I'll be like, Oh, wait, I wanted to talk about that aspect of the book. Oh, and that too. I can't believe I forgot to mention that in my video. So I'm sure that's going to be like that with this review as well. Um, I got to stop doing these reviews when I'm so tired and write some notes down or something. <laughs> but anyways, that's about it for right now for the troop. Um, I have a review of this up on Goodreads too. I can't remember everything I wrote in that review at, at the moment. If you want to go check that out, I'll post a link down in the description. And... Yeah, go look me up on Goodreads. I usually write reviews for most of the books I read on there. I don't always do video reviews for. But that's about it. If you've read this book, please let me know your thoughts down in the description. Did you love this book? Did you hate it? Are you kind of like me? You thought it was a good book, but you just couldn't really get behind it all that much or see yourself rereading it just because of how dark it was. But yeah, let me know your thoughts of it down in the description. That's about all I have to say for Nick Cutter's The Troop. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.